Now, we're really interested today, however, in, in general how aspirin works and other um, analgesics of the same class. And they work, and it's a chemical messaging system, but it's, it's slightly different. Um, what happens with the aspirin is it interferes um, with the production of prostaglandins. Okay, prostaglandins are small molecules that, um, that send messages um, throughout the body, um, and they oftentimes will uh, send a message to um, cause another hormone to be released. So prostaglandins themselves aren't hormones, but they are part of the chemical messaging system. All right, and prostaglandins are, are really kind of cool because whereas hormones have to be um, synthesized in particular glands, prostaglandins are synthesized all over the body, wherever they're needed. And what happens is the way a prostaglandin, which is a chemical messenger, is produced is um, as a result of some sort of cellular damage, um, whether it be attacked by a bacteria or a virus or um, some, you know, trauma of some sort, when there's any kind of damage going on in a cell, the cell will release ar arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is um, an acid that's found in phospholipids um, in the cell membrane, because you know the cell membranes are made of lipids, lipid bilayer. And um, so this, this fatty acid, arachidonic acid, is um, one of the fatty acids on a phospholipid group. And so anyway, it'll be re released and there's a special enzyme, a class of enzymes actually, it's not just one, it's a class of enzymes called cyclooxygenases, cyclooxygenases, or they're, they're abbreviated COX, C-O-X. It's a class of enzymes that um, catalyzes the synthesis of prostaglandins from the arachidonic acid. So prostaglandins actually look a lot like a fatty acid. Um, the arachidonic acid has just been changed. And there's lots of different prostaglandins, and they have lots of different jobs. But one of the jobs of one type of prostaglandin is um, upon its um, formation, it signals other biochemical changes around the damaged cell to uh, retain water, which causes swelling. So this is trying to kind of partition off the damaged area. You know, that would happen like if you have an infection or if you've, you know, broken your arm or sprained your ankle or whatever. So you can have swelling. Um, other uh, prostaglandins cause fever because fever, um, increasing the temperature of your body, can kill off ba some bacteria and viruses. And also um, pain. It, 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 it um, increases the sensitivity of pain receptors so that you know there's something wrong with that part of your body and you'll tend to it. Okay, so it's really an amazing um, chemical chain of events. Um, the prostaglandins, that is, of how, um, you know, this simple little fatty acid is converted to prostaglandins, which then send all these chemical signals. Alrighty. Um, so anyway, why am I talking about all this? Because aspirin, how does aspirin work? The way aspirin works is it actually binds to the active site of some of these cyclooxygenase um, enzymes. And if it binds to the site... The active site, the active site is where arachidonic acid should be binding. But if aspirin binds instead, then um, the prostaglandin can't be produced, and so therefore you limit the swelling, the fever, and the pain. Alrighty, so um, that's how aspirin works. So somehow it is um, binding to a to a um, receptor or to the receptor or to the active site of the um, Cox enzyme.